Every climber wants a shoe that can do everything. A shoe that can climb indoors, outdoors, big walls, boulders, sport climbs, track climbs, every angle and every rock type. But is there such a thing? Is there one shoe to rule them all? Of course there isn't. Climbing shoes are designed fit for purpose. So to have one shoe that was both good for standing on tiny crystals all day long in a big wall, but could also win World Cups on slopey volumes is absolutely impossible. So today's video is tackling that question. What shoes do we need for which rock types and why? This is the second video of a three-part series supported by my climbing shoe sponsor, Scarpa. In the first video, we took a look at common myths about climbing shoes. But today, we're gonna to be delving into what shoes you need for the type of climbing you do. Be it climbing sandstone sport climbs in Red River Gorge, granite bouldering in Magic Wood, or adventurous trad on gnarly Scottish sea cliffs. So without further ado, let's take a look at what climbing shoes you need on your feet. One of the most common misconceptions about climbing shoes is that all climbing shoes are designed specifically for the discipline. But that's complete bollocks. Climbing shoes are designed for the type of foothold you need to stand on. Think about it. Why does wearing a harness and being tied into a rope change the way your foot works on the climb? It doesn't. The problem is that very few climbers actually think that detailed as to what they're standing on. It's much easier to say they're a sport climber than to say they climb on sandstone edges on steep 30 degree overhanging cliffs. And because of this, climbing shoe manufacturers will make shoes and say they're a sport climbing shoe or a bouldering shoe or a trad shoe. But I've got news for you. I went indoor climbing in my pair of Maestros, marketed as a trad and big wall shoe, and I liked it. You rebel scum. I also went big walling in a pair of Magos, and I didn't like it. Stupid fat hobbit, it ruins it. If we want to get the most out of our climbing shoes, it's important that we understand this key concept, that climbing shoes are designed for footholds and then identify when we go climbing what it is that we're standing on. From there, we can then move on to choosing the right climbing shoes for us. Poor Robbie. Does that mean we need to bring every type of climbing shoe in case we come across a certain foothold? That seems a little bit crazy. No, of course not. If we're selecting shoes by foothold type, one method to help with this is looking at the surface we're climbing on, be that rock or plastic. Today we're focusing on rock climbing, but for, but for those wanting to know more about indoor shoes, don't worry, our next video is tackling that head on. The three classic rock types are limestone, sandstone and granite. Of course, there are a lot more than just those and there's tons of variation even within those groups, but it's a good place to start because rock types share commonalities that make choosing the right climbing shoe much easier. But before I continue, I just want to say this. This is a guide. It's not to say you can't climb hard indoors with stiff rubber or climb El Cap in an extremely downturned pair of soft shoes, but there is a reason why shoes are designed the way they are. And if we as climbers understand that better, then we'll be able to perform better and have more fun on the wall. Now limestone is probably the most common rock type in Europe and it's mostly sport climbing although there are pockets of limestone bouldering dotted about. A few good examples of limestone areas is the steep pocketed limestone of the Frankenjura in Germany, the technical vert limestone of the Verdun in France and the tufa dripping caves of Kalymnos in Greece. Look at these three examples. They are all quite different in their style and so different types of shoes will be useful. As Kalymnos and Frankenjur are generally steeper, climbing shoes with a downturn and asymmetrical design will be good. On steeper angles, you need to use your feet like talons, pulling with them as well as pushing. The downturn of a shoe will help a lot here, but the footholds between Kalymnos and Frankenjur vary vastly. Limestone with tufas, like Kalymnos, has larger feet and rounded, flatter surfaces, so smearing is really important. 
We need a softer shoe to grip better on the smears and something with good sticky toe rubber for hooking behind the tuvas and stalactites in the roof. Something like this Chimera could be really effective here because it has a softer rubber sole for smearing but also utilises a much stiffer midsole around the toe and edge of the boot for better edging. In places with pockets like the Frankenure, one of the tricky parts about this foothold is that they are inset, meaning you need a lot of precision through the front point of your shoe to get a good amount of purchase and power through the foot. Precise shoes, as I call them, are perfect in this setting. They are built with a high toe box, so your toes curl up at the end. This is so you get more support through your toes, but still benefit from the sensitivity of a softer shoe. Something like a Booster or a Mago could be ideal as the midsole is shaped to provide a stiffer point right on the big toe, ideal for steep climbing on pockets and edges. The Mago is my shoe of choice here as it's more precise than a Booster, but it does have a more sculptured heel and higher toe box, making it a less comfortable option. The Booster is ideal for those who want the precision of the Mago but can't hack the Mago's fit. Unfortunately, this precision comes at the cost of comfort and takes getting used to. These are definitely not beginner shoes. Now, if we're climbing on dirty little limestone edges such that you'd find on techie vert limestone in Verdon or the Alps, a Mago or a Booster just wouldn't be ideal. They do the job, but realistically, they're just too aggressive and you just don't need a shoe as precise as this for this sort of climbing. They'll just be uncomfortable. We need a shoe that is comfortable smearing on slick water-worn limestone, but can also stand on tiny edges. My go-to here would be a shoe that utilizes a stiffer midsole along the base of the shoe, potentially also a stiffer rubber with a flatter, less downturn shape. Scarpa's Instinct line here is great for this kind of climbing. Anything from the Instinct laces here through to the blue VSRs would work really well. I mean, I personally find the VSR softer rubber really well adapted for smearing, but equally the Instinct VS, the oranges of these and laces are great if you want something a little stiffer as they use a stiffer rubber. And as I said before, if you're a little bit heavier or have weaker toes, yes, that is definitely a thing, then stiff rubber is often preferred. I mean, the bottom line with limestone is that you're mostly trying to get power through the toes on edges and pockets, and the friction is relatively low compared to sandstone or granite, so you don't smear as much. And in this case, look for shoes with stiff edges and precise toes over softer models designed for smearing. The one exception, of course, is climbing in stalactites and tufas in big caves. Now sandstone is a much softer rock and generally forms a much more aesthetic and curved shape than limestone. Now this means generally more slopers for your hands and your feet, which of course means more friction required. When we need friction, soft rubber with a malleable midsole is what we need. But even sandstone can come in varying styles. You've got the techie sandstone boulders of Fontainebleau in France, to the overhanging caves of Red River Gorge in Kentucky, and in the UK, the gritstone of the Peak District is a form of sandstone that's worth talking about as its requirements are subtly different as well. The variation in sandstone is less about the foothold type and more to do with the coarseness of the sandstone itself. Example, is it a relatively smooth or is it coarse with little pebbles through it? Sandstone, which is coarser, such as the grit, requires a shoe that can smear as well as stand on little pebbles and edges. For this, I would say look for shoes with a softer rubber sole, but with a stiffer midsole, ideally one that has a half length or three quarter length sole, as you want some rigidity through more of the foot as opposed to just along the toes. From Scarpa, the Instinct VSR, with its softer rubber sole and stiffer midsole, works wonders in this area, but it certainly isn't worth ruling out the Vapor V as a solid alternative for those who need a wider fit. Smoother sandstones, such as you'd find in Font, doesn't have as much friction as the coarser grain sandstones, and so a super soft shoe with a malleable midsole is the key to many of those classic Font slabs, fridge huggers, and gnarly front top outs. To be frank, you need more than just a soft shoe. You also need one with tons of sticky rubber around the toe and forefoot to get grip in a wider array of foot angles. Climbing hard boulders on sandstone isn't just about standing on smears, it's about wrapping your toes around sloping arets, toking out of roofs, and generally just using your feet in many weird and wonderful ways that without would make climbing some of these boulders impossible. I mean, I'd be looking for something like the Drago or the Chimera. Both of them use super sticky M50 rubber all over the front toe part here for extra grip, but the Chimera has marginally stiffer midsole for added precision. 
And finally, there is a different type of sandstone such that you'd find in Red River Gorge that forms steep, swooping caves with jugs, pockets and edges for days. No need to say really that a downturn will definitely help with the steeper caves, but also a soft, sticky rubber to gain friction on the rough texture of the sandstone. Again, I think both the Drago and the Chimera would work really well here as they cover all bases for this kind of rock, and they both have the downturn for steeper climbing. But let's not rule out a much more precise shoe either. The Booster here is built with the same soft rubber as a Drago, but has a much stiffer midsole focusing power to the front of the toe. For this reason, you can be sure to get both friction and power when you need it. The bottom line with sandstone is that you're mostly trying to smear your feet and gain more rubber contact for increased friction. In this case, soft shoes with malleable midsoles are ideal, but on steeper ground where the footholds might be smaller, definitely don't rule out a nice pair of precise shoes. And granite, the hardiest of hard rock types that exist. From the glacier polished walls of El Capitan to the harsh crystalline granite of Val di Mello in Italy. I think you'll agree with me, granite climbing varies a lot. But irrespective of that, granite still remains a really high friction rock type, meaning it's sticky as anything. If you were to zoom in with a powerful microscope, a piece of granite would essentially look like billions of little sharp crystals sticking up, ready to pierce whatever it touches, be that your fingertips or some sticky rubber. The cool thing about climbing on granite though is its duality. You need to be able to both stand on sharp edges and crystals, but also smear up a smooth slab. Now the shoe you want for climbing on granite has to be an all-rounder. Something that can edge as well as smear. Does this exist? Well, you can't have the best of both worlds, but you can get pretty close. The ultimate shoe I found for bouldering and sport climbing on granite in the Scarpa range is probably the Instinct VS. The stiff rubber and midsole provide all that you need for standing on crystals and edges, but it has a flexible three-quarter length midsole for smearing and more adaptability on different angles of walls. Now certainly on steeper boulders, such that you'd find in Magic Wood or steep sport climbing in Flatanger, you may find that soft rubber is better for getting more purchase on smears and rounded edges. Now in a perfect world, you would have an extra pair of soft shoes with you, but this isn't the most affordable option short term. With performance in mind, however, it's ideal because for the moments when you need something super soft, you'll have them ready. I mean, I usually always have a pair of Dragos or Chimeras with me, just for such occasions, as I love the super soft M50 toe rubber for extra toe hooking in the overhangs. But when we talk about granite, we can't miss out the granite climbing mecca that is Yosemite. It's here you have to deal with small granite edges and crystals, as well as slick glacier polished slabs and corners. Now you may have remembered me saying earlier that climbing shoes are designed for footholds. That is true, but there is one exception to this big wall and trad climbing. For these disciplines, it's not only about what you're standing on, but how long you're standing on them for, because comfort becomes a huge issue when you're standing on small granite edges for hours and shoving your feet into cracks day after day. It doesn't matter how much better that shoe is if it's so unbearably painful that you throw it away in anger after pitch three. So the type of shoes that are good for big walls tend to be flatter, less asymmetric shoes with really rigid midsoles and stiff rubber. All of this is to provide support and comfort to your feet, so you only have to worry about getting to the top and not that your feet will fall off by pitch 13. Now without a doubt, the most popular shoe used on Yosemite big walls is the La Sportiva TC Pro. It's one of the most uncompromisingly stiff shoes out there. The Scarpa alternative is the Maestro and Maestro Mid. Now the Maestro Mid is slightly stiffer and has a high ankle protection for when you're shoving your feet into cracks. But I personally prefer the less stiff Maestro as it's not quite as rigid as the Maestro Mid, provides enough support in your toe for really hard edging as well as a good amount of flex for the technical laybacks and smearing that you often find on hard granite pitches. The bottom line with granite is that it's probably the most varied of all rock types. On big granite walls, you'll want something super stiff and comfortable for long days out. But equally, on steep granite boulders, you may want something super soft. For me, this further drives home the point that ultimately, we as climbers just need to become more in tune with what it is we're standing on. If we can do that, we'll be able to make better purchasing decisions when it comes to our climbing shoes, and as a result, climb harder on the rock.
But the bottom line with all of this is that it's a fairly personal affair. What works for some doesn't work for others. And again, all of what I've just said is merely a guide to help you guys make the right decision for you. So on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this and taken some climbing shoe knowledge from it. If anything, I hope that it provides just a little bit of insight into the wonderful world of climbing shoes. If you haven't already, definitely check out my last climbing shoe video and stay tuned for the next one, focusing on the best climbing shoes for indoors. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding that wee bell for notifications on when my next video is out. Catch you guys later. And stiffer midsole works wonders in this area, but it certainly isn't worth ruling out the Vapor V. Oh! <laughs> Why did you do that? Why did you?